Hey everyone, Tactics here, and in today's video we're going to be doing an in-depth look at how Vengeance Demon Hunters are looking on the Shadowlands beta. This includes their new baseline abilities, their talents, legendaries, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and where they stand in both raids and mythic plus. This is my fourth of six Shadowlands tank videos, which you can check out in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe for more Warcraft content like it, and let's start with the added baseline abilities for Vengeance Demon Hunters. As a class, Demon Hunters haven't been around very long, so they didn't gain too much in Shadowlands. First off, Vengeance has had a resource change, and they now use Fury instead of Pain. This doesn't really change anything for the spec, and it's more of a clarity change to try and make sure all specs of the same class use the same resource. In more exciting news, the Fell Devastation talent is now baseline for Vengeance, though it has been given a 50 Fury resource cost. Alongside this, the Revel and Pain Azerite trait is now also baseline, which causes Fiery Brand to grant you an Absorb Shield based on your damage done to the target. Finally, Soul Cleave is now target capped at 5 targets, though it will also now heal you an additional amount for each Soul Fragment consumed. I'm going to deviate slightly here and talk about legendaries before talents, as Demon Hunters have a couple extremely powerful legendaries that use different builds of talent synergies that are better explained up front. Starting with the Fiery Soul Legendary, this causes Soul Fragments consumed by Soul Cleave to reduce the cooldown of Fiery Brand by 2 seconds. This is an extremely strong defensive legendary, especially with Revel and Pain now baseline, and when combined with a trio of talents that allow you to both extend and spread Fiery Brands, it can be very good in both Raids and Mythic Plus. Razalik's Defilement is the other major legendary, which causes Soul Cleave to reduce the cooldown on a random sigil by 8 seconds. As we'll see later, this combined with both a talent and the Kyrian ability can lead to some extremely high damage numbers, though this is a result of some semi-degenerate gameplay. Aside from these two generally strong legendaries, there's Felflame Fortification, which is a more situational choice for fights where you're mostly taking magic damage. It causes your Immolation Aura to also reduce your magic damage taken by 15%. Unlike the previous two legendaries mentioned, it doesn't have any offensive upside, and generally it's just a much more niche effect that you likely won't use very often. Last up for the Vengeance specific legendaries is Spirit of the Darkness Flame, which causes Fiery Brand to heal you for its initial damage, and causes enemies hit by your Sigil Flame to increase the initial damage by 15% stacking 15 times. Unfortunately, when compared directly to Fiery Soul, which is the other legendary that affects Fiery Brand, this initial self-healing and damage struggles to make up for the additional cast you would gain, which also provide additional damage as well as healing and the absorb granted by the now baseline Revel in Pain. In general, it's just hard to justify using this legendary over Fiery Soul. I also wanted to give a shout out to the general legendary Dark Glare Boon, which gives Fell Devastation a 20% chance to not go on cooldown when used. This is very good in combination with the new Vengeance Demonic Talent, which allows you to gain a higher uptime on your Metamorphosis, but while good on paper, personally I just feel it's a little bit too inconsistent, which makes it a lot less desirable for high-end content, where reliable, consistent defensive output is much more sought after. Moving on to Talents, Vengeance has actually seen a decent number of changes to their tree. Starting with the level 15 row, Abyssal Strike has had the old Flame Crash talent worked into it, now reducing the cooldown of Infernal Strike by 8 seconds and causing it to place a sigil of flame where you land. Agonizing Flame has had the move speed buff reduced from 30% to 20%, and now instead of increasing the damage of Immolation Aura by 20%, it increases its duration by 50%. Last up on this row, Razor Spikes has been removed, and in its place is Fellblade. Abyssal Strike remains a decent option on this row as it provides both a damage boost as well as an increase to Vengeance's mobility. In Spirit Bomb build, it is likely to be the go-to talent. Agonizing Flames does have some solid synergy with a couple talents down the line in Burning Alive and Charred Flesh, and is part of the trio I mentioned when talking about the Fiery Soul Legendary. If you aren't taking advantage of those synergies, then I would say Abyssal Strike beats it out. Foulblade is an interesting option for a large burst of Fury generation on a short cooldown, which can allow you to pump out more Soul Cleaves, which in turn grants you CDR on your sigils if using Razlik's Defilement, but this extra damage comes at the cost of survivability, which may not be worthwhile in pushing higher content. Next we've got the level 25 row, which is largely unchanged, with Feast of Souls and Fallout being identical, and Burning Alive having the damage portion removed. Feast of Souls is the odd man out here, and likely won't ever get picked. Fallout is a great generalist option for survivability, and synergizes well with Spirit Bomb. 
Burning Alive, as mentioned previously, synergizes very well with both Agonizing Flames on the previous row and Charred Flesh on the next row, and of course with the Fiery Brand Legendary. From there we've got the level 30 row, which now houses Spirit Bomb in place of Fellblade, and the Azerite trait Infernal Armor reworked into a talent in the vacancy left by Flame Crash. Charred Flesh has also had a significant change, no longer causing Fiery Brand to increase the damage of your fire abilities, and instead causing Immolation Aura damage to increase the duration of your Fiery Brand by 0.5 seconds. As I've repeatedly mentioned, the synergy between this talent, Agonizing Flames, and Burning Alive allows you to both spread and extend your Fiery Brands, which gives you a significant mitigation boost whether you choose to use the Fiery Soul Legendary or not. Spirit Bomb builds are still usable in Shadowlands, though currently they are a little less popular compared to the other options. It is still a perfectly viable alternative for those of you that enjoy playing with it. Lastly, Infernal Armor is a boost against physical damage and also has decent synergy with Agonizing Flames as well, which helps to make the gaps in your mitigation feel less painful. Then we've got the level 35 row, which is completely unchanged from Battle for Azeroth. Soul Rending is an extremely lackluster option that likely won't ever be picked. Feed the Demon is the best defensive option on this row, allowing you to lower the cooldown of Demon Spikes by a decent amount, which is another talent that helps to reduce the gaps in your mitigation. The go-to on this row will likely remain Fracture, however, as it is the best damage option, it provides an efficient stream of fury, and frankly it just feels good to play with. The level 40 row is another unchanged row going into Shadowlands, housing the Sigil-related talents. Sigils of Chains is fantastic for Mythic Plus if you want more mob control. If you'd rather have a damage increase, you can instead opt for Quicken Sigils, which when combined with Razlix Defilement can result in your damage sigils having an extremely low cooldown. Concentrated Sigils lacks any great synergies or additional utility compared to the other talents on this row, and is currently finding itself to be the odd man out. Moving on, we have the level 45 row. Both Void Reaver and Soul Barrier have found homes on this row in place of the moved Spirit Bomb and now Baseline Foul Devastation. In addition, Gluttony has been removed and replaced with Demonic, which works similar to the Havoc Demon Hunter's Demonic, granting 6 seconds of meta after using Fell Devastation. In general, we see that Demonic tends to pull ahead in most scenarios, and because of the strength it provides, there are very few situations where you'll see the other talents used. Lastly, we've got the Capstone level 50 talent row, including two new talents in Ruinous Bulwark and Bulk Extraction. Ruinous Bulwark increases the healing of the now baseline Fell Devastation by 15%, and also causes 50% of its overhealing to be converted to an Absorb Shield for 10 seconds. Unfortunately, this talent doesn't have much value, as when doing higher end content there isn't likely to be much overhealing at all, essentially making it just a 15% healing increase on a 1 minute cooldown which isn't too great considering the other options. Bulk Extraction is a 1.5 minute cooldown that deals AoE damage and extracts up to 5 soul fragments and instantly consumes them. Overall, the defensive portion of this talent isn't very beneficial, resulting in it being a win more talent for additional damage when doing less difficult content. That leaves us with Last Resort, the 8 minute cooldown cheat Death that procs meta, which is by far the best talent on this row when doing relevant content. As I've mentioned in previous videos, a cheat death is extremely powerful for tanks, especially when pushing higher keys or doing mythic raids, making this the default choice. When it comes to Covenants, Vengeance falls in a similar category as Protection Warriors, where one appears to be dominant in pretty much all scenarios, though for different reasons. For Vengeance, this is the Kyrians, largely due to the fact that the Demon Hunter ability Elysian Decree acts like a sigil, resulting in some very powerful interactions with both Razlik's Defilement as well as the Quicken Sigil talent. For those unaware, Elysian Decree deals AoE arcane damage to all enemies and shatters up to three lesser soul fragments from those affected. The combination of these three things can lead to some slightly degenerate gameplay where you are actively incentivized to not use your other sigils in order to get the maximum cooldown reduction on the Legion Decree, which doesn't really feel the greatest to play. I wouldn't be surprised to see this change before launch, but as of the release of this video, we're only a couple weeks out of Shadowlands and it has yet to be nerfed. Kyrians also grant the best general ability for tanks in File of Serenity, as the extra health potion and ability to remove debuffs, especially bleeds, is quite strong in both raids and mythic plus. Alongside these strong abilities, the Kyrian soulbinds are also great on their own. Pelagos remains a strong offensive option with a large mastery proc tied to Elysian Decree, though there is a 1 minute internal cooldown on this ability so it will only proc every couple of uses. He also has a cooldown reduction on file for each enemy killed, as well as a powerful versatility buff. 
Do note that this versatility buff was nerfed slightly this past week, making it much more annoying to maintain, though still doable. Clea is looking like a very strong option for Mythic Plus, with the recent Valiant Strikes change, which now will use its stacks to heal an ally, including yourself, that falls below 50% HP. These stack up quite quickly in a group, and since it can self-heal, this does a significant amount of relevant healing for tanks. She also provides Cleansing Rites, which gives you a 10% max health shield when out of combat for 5 seconds, which is great for dungeons with large gaps between packs or a lot of RP, but not so good in raids. Lastly, she provides a crit buff equal to 1% per nearby enemy or ally, up to a max of 8%. This is quite easy to keep at full stacks in both raids and dungeons, making it a solid stat boost. Last up is Mechanicos, who definitely appears to be the weakest of the bunch for Vengeance, providing a brawn when you cast 90 abilities, but as I've mentioned in previous videos, this can be annoying due to the knockback attached to him, as it's somewhat uncontrollable. Mechanicos can also attach a knockback to using File, or cause File to auto-trigger below 35% health, but again, these two abilities are quite bad for tanks, as you would normally want to use File for specific events such as Bleed Dispels. On his final row, he has Hammer of Genesis, which is a solid haste boost for the start of pulls in Mythic Plus, but it finds itself to be lacking in most raid fights. In the end, Kyrians are by far the best choice for Vengeance at this time in all forms of content, thanks to the synergies between talents, legendaries, and their Demon Hunter ability, as well as the general strength of Vile and their soulbinds for tanks. Just as Kyrians are by far the best option, it's fairly safe to say that Necrolord is by far the worst. The Demon Hunter ability Fodder to the Flame has been changed a couple times, but is still quite weak. This currently summons a demon that when killed drops a puddle for 15 seconds, and any enemies within the puddle deal 15% reduced damage. The demon also leaves behind an Empowered Soul which increases your damage by 25%. So basically it's a 2 minute cooldown which gives you a short damage buff and requires you to position other enemies in a puddle it spawns to get full defensive value out of it. Overall it's just not great. The general Necrolord ability is Fleshcraft, a channeled absorb shield that is stronger when used near powerful enemies, which isn't terrible, but it can be difficult to fit in time to channel it during dungeons. And again, it's a 2 minute cooldown so it doesn't do a ton of healing overall. Combined with these poor abilities are several lacking soulbinds. Starting with Merilith, he causes Fleshcraft to grant you small 6 minute stat buffs depending on the type of enemy you use Fleshcraft on. Which is a nice little benefit to have, but often in raid fights or dungeons, you don't really have a choice on creature type, which could leave you stuck with buffs that are weak compared to others, such as a 2% mastery buff which is provided by humanoids. He also provides a 15 max health absorb shield when falling below 50% HP, which in general just seems worse than Clea's Valiant Strikes, as it can heal for up to 40% max health on a shorter cooldown. The final trait he has is Ultimate Form, which again is fairly weak, providing you CC immunity and health regeneration during and for 4 seconds after channeling Fleshcraft. Amini is also a weak option, with his only strong trait being Lead by Example, which provides a primary stat buff to you and your party members when using Fodder to the Flame. It's all downhill from there though, as he provides a fairly weak 5% health buff for 30 seconds after using Fleshcraft, as well as a short haste buff after killing enemies, which is only really usable in Mythic Plus, and even then it's likely you'll lose a lot of value. Bonesmith caps things off, providing a pseudo cheat death that allows you to fight for 10 seconds after dying at 50% effectiveness, which isn't really great. He does have a thorns-like effect in Serrated Spalders, which deals a decent amount of damage in Mythic Plus. He also provides the choice between a crit buff that can proc once every 60 seconds, or a health regeneration buff based on enemies killed, which is okay in Mythic Plus but falls into a similar problem as Amini's haste buff where there's a good chance of losing value by being refreshed at the end of packs, which results in overhealing. In general, Necrolord provides poor options in terms of both abilities and soulbinds, and is shaping up to be the worst covenant choice for Vengeance. Moving on, we've got the Night Fae, who provide demon hunters with the hunt, a 1 minute cooldown causing you to charge at your target, rooting them and putting a dot on up to 5 enemies in your path. You also heal for 25% of the damage dealt to your hunt target for 30 seconds. This ability is very strong in single target, competing with the extremely synergistic Kyrians, however it definitely falls off in AoE by comparison. You also don't usually get to make use of the full 30 second healing buff in dungeons, as packs don't tend to last too long, making this much better suited to those of you who only care about raids and really don't want angel wings on your demon hunter. Night Phase also give all members the ability Soul Shape, which is a 50% move speed increase that also lets you blink every few seconds for 12 seconds. Overall this ability feels like a bit overkill for demon hunters who rarely find themselves in need of more mobility. 
Looking at their available soul binds, Naya grants a max health and mastery buff for 30 seconds where buff stacks overlap, and you gain a bunch of stacks when actually using the hunt. This is an alright buff which makes the hunt a much stronger defensive ability, though mastery isn't the most desired stat for vengeance in general. She also provides cooldown reduction to soul shape on kills, which really only has value in mythic plus, but again soul shape isn't the most impactful ability for demon hunters. On her final row, she can cause your successful interrupts to deal damage, another good ability for Mythic Plus, but is lacking in raids, though this damage occurs over 30 seconds, and as I mentioned earlier, Mythic Plus packs are unlikely to live too long. Dreamweaver looks like an appealing option for raiding, granting access to another cheat death in Pod Tender, which as I said is extremely powerful during progression raiding. This isn't great in Mythic Plus, however, as the pod does need to be protected for 10 seconds. On top of this, she also provides a versatility buff that bounces between yourself and two allies, as well as a haste buff tied to the hunt, though it is important to note that you have to stand in the designated area in order to gain this buff, which obviously causes uptime problems if movement is needed. Lastly, there's Corrin, who is shaping up to be the best Mythic Plus option, granting a 10% damage boost against target above 75% health, and a 10% healing boost to targets below 35% health. In raids, this damage boost tends to just be pad, but in dungeons it's a lot more valuable. In addition, the healing buff boosts your self heals when they are most needed. Corrin's final row has a couple solid defensive options as well as a crit buff. Face Your Foes is one of the defensive options, which looks solid in Mythic Plus, causing your abilities to decrease the damage of targets you are in front of by 3%. The other defensive option is Hold the Line, which causes you to take 15% less physical damage after standing still for 5 seconds, which is great if movement isn't required. First Strike is a short but large crit buff when damaging an enemy before they damage you, which again is a good Mythic Plus option but not very good in raids. Overall, Night Fae has some solid options for raids and competes with Kyrian in single target, however it is a bit lacking in AoE, and the extra mobility granted by Soul Shape isn't too valuable for demon hunters in general. Last up we've got the Venthyr, who offer the Sinful Brand ability which deals shadow damage over 8 seconds to an enemy and reduces their attack and casting speed by 30% for the duration. It also applies to all nearby targets when using meta. While this sounds very strong for AoE situations such as Mythic Plus, it unfortunately loses out to Kyrian. Similarly, in single target situation it loses out to both Kyrian and Night Fae, leaving it in a spot where it doesn't shine in any sort of PvE content. The Venthyr general ability is Dwarf Shadows, which is another ability that is a bit lacking as so far there haven't been any relevant skips found using this ability in Mythic Plus, and even if there was it's unlikely groups would use too many of them as it's much easier to just bring a rogue to enable other skips. They do provide some solid soulbind options though, starting with Nadia, Thrillseeker is a solid haste buff that procs more often when killing enemies making it very good in Mythic Plus. She also provides a flat 20% boost to your foods, flask, and weapon enchant buffs, which is powerful in all types of content. Theotar has a mastery buff proc, however like Dreamweaver this is also tied to a location so movement can hurt its uptime. Outside of that, you can choose between a versatility buff for you and your party tied to Sinful Brand, or a 100-200% increase in combat potion length, which can be very strong when potting alongside Lust or the Prideful buff, though of course it is a bit RNG. Last up is Draven who offers some strong defensive options. Service and Stone grants you a 10% damage reduction below 40% HP, which is basically a small defensive during important moments. He also causes you to explode on death, dealing your max health and damage and healing to nearby enemies and allies, though this isn't the main benefit of the ability. On top of this, he attaches a 15% max health shield to Dwarf Shadows, which makes it a lot more useful in general. Lastly, he offers the choice between a 10% crit buff on successful interrupts once per 30 seconds, which is solid in dungeon for the extra stats, or a 10% stamina and 4% healing done buff while standing still for 4 seconds that also persists for 6 seconds after moving, which allows it to maintain value even if you have to move. To conclude, Venther has some powerful soul binds, however their covenant abilities are definitely lacking. Door of Shadows often requires Draven to have any value, and Sinful Brand loses out in AoE in single target situations to other Covenants. If you're only concerned about Mythic Plus and are dead set on not being Kyrian, they can be a good option, but outside of that they struggle to find a place. Moving on to Conduits, as with most classes and specs in the game, the Covenant specific potency Conduits tend to be quite strong. For Kyrians, it causes Elysian Decree to echo a second sigil one second later for 25-60% to damage depending on rank, which is a nice boost in both AoE and single target. 
For Necrolords, this extends the duration of your Empowered Demon buff by 1 to 15 seconds, which isn't great early, but is solid at higher ranks. Not that it matters as Necrolords is just, uh, it's, it's not good. The Night Fae Conduit increases the primary target damage of the hunt by 25-60%, to 60%, reinforcing its strength in single target, and the Venthyr reduces the cooldown of Sinful Brand by 5-12 to 12 seconds, which ends up being a 20% cooldown reduction at max rank, so this is a nice little boost to the single target effect, though it doesn't affect it in AoE as this is all tied to Metamorphosis. Outside of the Covenant option, there's one good and one bad potency for Vengeance. Starting with the good, Growing Inferno increases Immolation Aura's damage by 10 to 24% each time it deals damage, which also has some solid synergy with Agonizing Flame's duration increase. The bad is Soul Furnace, which causes you to increase the damage of your next Soul Cleave by 30 to 75% once you've consumed 10 Soul Fragments. In general, this doesn't add up to much at all offensively, so it's hard to justify taking it. From there, I'll briefly mention the Finesse Conduits, though really none of them are great and only one is usable for Vengeance. Lost in Darkness is for PvP, allowing Spectral Sight to last longer if disrupted, so you'll want to avoid this for PvE content. Demonic Parole puts a 50% slow on enemies that leave your imprison, which is extremely niche and again something you'll want to avoid as it's probably for PvP. Ravenous Consumption causes your purge to have a 15-30% to 30 chance to purge a second effect, another PvP effect which does have some niche uses in PvE, though there aren't a ton of situations where you need to purge multiple effects in dungeons, so it won't be used much if at all. That leaves us with the only finesse option you should be taking if you have to take a finesse option in Fellfire Haste, which causes Infernal Strike to give you 5-20% to 20 move speed buff for 8 seconds, which is a nice little boost when kiting in either dungeons or raids. With the disappointment over, let's look at what really shines for Vengeance in their Endurance options. Shadowed Restoration is extremely powerful, increasing the healing of Shattered Souls by 5-12%, to 12 which is a significant boost to Vengeance's self-sustain. Viscous Ink is another powerful option, providing a passive 6-13% magic damage resistance. While in extremely high magic damage scenarios this can outpace Shattered Restoration, it's usually a bit less valuable but still a solid second option. If you're running a Fire Brand based build, Fell Defender can be quite powerful, reducing the cooldown of Fire Brand by 5-20 to 20 seconds. This starts out slow at low ranks, but provides a ridiculous amount of cooldown reduction once you start ranking it up. Roaring Fire and Demon Muzzle are definitely several steps down from the three previously mentioned options, with Roaring Fire causing Fell Devastation to heal you for 30-45% to 45 more depending on missing health, and Demon Muzzle causing enemies affected by Sigil of Silence to deal 5-12% to 12 reduced magic damage for 8 seconds. Both of these provide nowhere near the same impact as the other options, and will likely not be picked. With all that said, where does this put Vengeance and Raids and Mythic Plus? Starting with Dungeons, Vengeance is solidly in the top position of all tanks. They are able to pump out huge amounts of damage, currently the best out of any tank spec, and are extremely durable during their defensives. They also bring solid utility from Chaos Brand, which is great when in a magic damage heavy group, as well as their sigils, though this currently isn't true with their semi-degenerate Elysian Decree spam build. It will be important to watch the state of this build in the upcoming weeks before launch, as I can see it being nerfed in some way, but even without it, Vengeance has solid damage, as well as a great defensive build option with the Fiery Brand spreading build. When it comes to raiding, it's a bit of a different story. Their damage of course is still great, but there is much less of a gap in single target compared to AoE. Tank damage in raid is also generally less important. On top of this, their sigils aren't nearly as good, and Chaos Brand can always be brought by a Havoc Demon Hunter if needed. Their biggest problem is needing to consistently tank something without kiting, as it really shines light on their biggest weakness, which is their gaps in their mitigation. In the end, Vengeance is looking very good in Shadowlands, especially shining in Mythic Plus. They gained a couple great baseline abilities in Fell Devastation and Revel in Pain, and had some very beneficial talent changes allowing for more synergy between rows. On top of this, they have a couple quite powerful legendaries that further synergize with their talents, as well as the Kyrian Covenant ability Elysian Decree, which is treated like a sigil. Due to this synergy, Kyrian is the go-to in all scenarios for Vengeance, which could result in an imminent nerf, but as of the release of this video, that has yet to happen. But that concludes our closer look at Vengeance Demon Hunters in Shadowlands. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe to be notified when I post more Warcraft content. I'll be posting a couple more tank videos focusing on both Brewmaster and Protection Paladin in the coming days, as well as guides for all the new Shadowlands dungeons, so keep an eye out for those. 
You can also follow me on Twitter or check me out on Twitch, both at Tactics. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.